Good morning. Before I actually get to this contact, content, I'm sorry, Risk Five. I was reading the slides just for like Risk Dash Feed and like not, you know, morning brain. Anyways, Risk Five, that is a real name. Sorry. Now, where do we go from here? So I've been a part of the CNCF community for about five years now. Uh, I first started off in Envoy as one of the first contributors. I started off at Lyft, uh, was there for a while. I joined Open Telemetry, a part of a mission. I'm on the Open Telemetry Governance Board. I was also on the program committee for 2019, and this is actually my fifth KubeCon as co-chair, or known to some as my reign of terror or observability. <laughs> I say this because I've read a lot of CFPs, and this has given me a holistic, global view of the CNCF ecosystem and what we're here to celebrate. One thing that has always been in the back of my mind since accepting this role is how do we keep KubeCon, CloudNativeCon relevant or fresh? And how do we keep CNCF relevant, right? We've heard yesterday from Katie and Priyanka, it's the next generation of CloudNative, and that's been in the back of the mind. And so where do we go from here? And that's what I'm gonna talk about. So who is we, what is here? We. Everyone in this room, right? It is the people in the technology. It's all of our CNCF projects and things tangentially, tangentially related to it. Everyone watching this now or later, contributors, end users, consumers. But it's so much more than that too, right? We have to also acknowledge the vendors and the industries built around it, right? I call this out because entire industries hinge on our technologies, everything that we build. That means that personas and typical roles involved in our projects have grown. This is actually why the business value track was added, right? This is highlighting sales, marketing, PM executives, even students, and talking about what the value of our projects are. All to say is that we can't ignore our impact and our scope. What is here? There is the physical here, right? We're at this conference. There is also the current adoption and relevant trends. There is meetups, day minus one, day zero events. Right? It is how relevant cloud native is to our careers, tech, and actually you can really say the rest of the world because a lot of things we build run most of the world. So remember this in the uh, part, there is no scar in the story, don't worry, we won't be traumatized. But you know, everything you see is in our realm, right? Every, CNCF is, is everywhere and it touches a lot of things. What this means is that there are a lot of opportunities. So we're gonna play a game. If you're attending virtually, you can post your answer in, I'm not gonna read that out loud, in that Slack channel. And if you're here, when I ask my question, I want you to say the first project that thinks to your mind, okay? And you can yeah, shout this out in here. So when I say cloud native or CNCF, what is the first project you think of? Okay, anyone else wanna yell? Okay, it's fine. So, right, Kubernetes. Now, this is great because it brings people to a conversation and we can drown them with our landscape. But I wanna change how we think about this. When I say cloud native or CNCF, I want people and organizations to think of a complete offering, everything needed for a cloud transformation. Because we are so much more than Kubernetes. Um, I've been asked many times before, should I adopt Kubernetes or Envoy? Kubernetes or open telemetry? First of all, you should not be asking me if you should adopt Kubernetes. It's not my strength. But this question actually does everyone a disservice. Right? There are numerous projects within CNCF. Right? This is taken from the 2020 CNCF annual report. And notice at the end of 2020, if you sum this all up, there's roughly 80 projects. As Priyanka shared yesterday, there are 100 and, over 130 projects. Another way to think of this is consider how many day one and day zero events there are. Right? You have to scroll through that. When you're registering, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you finally get to the next tab. This is an indication that our community has shifted and grown and our needs are evolving. Secondly, is that how we shape the question shapes the answer. Right? If we keep on saying, should I adopt this, you're gonna think everything can be solved by that. Right? Everything will look like a nail. Everything can be solved by one project. So this actually leads us to a problem. We, and so I will give us all kudos. We're getting really good at acknowledging our blind spots and we are acknowledging that there is a cost to adopting a new, te new technology. A lot of our offerings require a lot of work, right? There is no free lunch. We do a lot of efforts to make things better, but we still have a lot of ways to go. Also, most of, our, most of our projects require an expert in the tools in addition to an expert in the adopters of these use case. I'm gonna thank Cornelia for this 
but um, the saying, right? Remember when you're in college, high school, learning, and textbooks would demonstrate a concept with an easy example and leave every, all the rest of the questions as an exercise to the reader? Were those questions easy? Anyone? No, right? Unfortunately, a lot of our technology is like that, right? It's, we'll talk a bit about why we can shift that. But so we are unfortunately putting a lot of burden on our consumers to learn about us and also learn about their use cases. Another thing, we don't have tight integration across most projects. Really, once you've adopted one project, you don't get a lot of freebies adopting another one, right? It doesn't necessarily mean your transition will be smoother. There are also gaps in our offerings, right? Now, I've been polling people uh, across the conference, and there's a few things that came up. Bare metal, IAM, uh, connection between L4 and L7 requests, ML. We're gonna talk a little bit more about these gaps in, this, in a few minutes. So I want us to reframe the question, right? Instead of, should I adopt Project X? Whenever someone asks me that question, I always ask them several questions in response. Because there isn't enough information, we're making, we'll make assumptions about the problem being solved. Also, I want to add a caveat. I want everyone to use all CNCF projects, or you know, at least like majority of them, but I know it isn't realistic. So just having that there, know that, that when we're thinking about these things, doesn't mean you always have to adopt them. So what is the biggest issue, right? So we're framing the question, what is the biggest issue you're faced with now, right? What will be your biggest issue coming soon? You should be asking this question when someone's asking if they want to adopt a project because it forces you to think about the present and the future, right? Well, like when you're mapping, do you know, right? You don't know if you're gonna turn left or right unless you know where you're going. So we need to think about that. We also need to think about why do you think those are issues? Do they have ties to your business? Is it solving a real problem? Another question is, how does it fit into the big picture? Is it actually worth your time, right? Is this actually, you know, sometimes it'd be great to fix everything, but if it's only maybe costing you one or two seconds and there's something else that has huge impact, that might not be worth it, right? Because we also have finite resources. And so how much resources do you have to throw this problem? These are the questions I want us to ask when people ask us about, should I adopt this project? Let's change it on them because we need to have more information. So why does this matter to everyone here? So a show of hands for folks who have rewritten significant parts of a stack. I'm asking for your participation. Yeah, I don't know, it's okay, it's not a bad thing, yeah. Who is now working on an open source version of something that they worked on that was closed source in the past? I'm gonna, yeah. You'll be my point of reference now, it's great, thank you. Um, right? So many, and you can argue most CNCF technologies, are evolutions of past mistakes. Because, right, and we need to keep this in mind because we don't want to repeat these mistakes, right? History repeats itself. Now, I don't know if we can actually ever break the rewrite cycle. There's eventually a time for everything, but maybe we can actually increase the length of these cycles, make them much longer, right? Another thing is, like, who's, who's this the first time attending KubeCon? Yeah, okay. And how many, and raise your hand if you've been to nth number of KubeCons. Nth being choose your own number, right? What is great about, right? Everyone's having a great time at KubeCon. And this is more than just a gathering of great minds. It's actually, it's a celebration, right? This is validation that we're doing good work and impactful work. We're solving real problems and that feels really good. Right? And then another thing that matters to us, to you, is calling out the, we need to identify the vendors and the industries, right? They have pivoted, industries and vendors have pivoted their entire model to leverage open source projects. It is now central to how they operate their day to day. There are also new industries that are popping up, right? There's, I think I saw a joke, it was like, oh, what are the new startups this, like this round of months at KubeCon, right? Entire things are being built around our projects. Now this is all to say that the scope and the impact of our projects is huge, and we all have an opportunity to leverage this momentum. Now, to make sure we can grow into Simba, right, overlooking the plains, let's look, talk about a mindset. Now, we normally talk about success, a success is adoption, right? Now, this is great. We can easily say, safely say, that CNCF is widely adopted, right? Look around, we're here. As um, Vibob just showed, the attendance at KubeCon but does this mean we'll always be relevant, 
cool, hip like the cool kids. Right, and so I want us to change this to success is adoption and sustainability. Right, sustainability being ease of long-term use. Does upgrading break everything? Do you enjoy using these projects? Right, is it, are there good docs? Does it continue to solve relevant problems as the domain evolve? Does it also reduce the mental load on our developers, right? A lot of, you know, you probably heard a lot of stories that some com companies or you know, organizations success is tied to that one person that knows where all the buried, bodies are buried. And if they leave, everything falls apart. Now, imagine me circling the and over and over and over again like a grade school teacher. The and is important. We need success to be adoption and sustainability. Now, this challenges us to think about how we build things and what we're achieving. If you're a maintainer, a few times a year, you'll get an email asking for project updates. And one question is about the impact of the end user. This question is asked because it paints a story. These stories contextualize what is built. Bad news, probably don't want to admit it, we're all building products, right? It just, we might not be thinking about it that way or we might not want to admit it. There's some connotations about it and I won't spoil Jasmine's talk and no, we didn't coordinate our talks, but you'll highlight some ways to think about this thing. Right, but thinking about a product is about understanding how your changes, say, to a YAML file, creates changes to, say, a mobile application. Right? There, it is how everything fits in together. Now, great news that there are new faces at KubeCon, and this is where I encourage you to leverage the business value tracks, especially if people are attending there. They're used to thinking about what, you know, say, a YAML file impacts a mobile application or something else. Right? This is how they are used to thinking about the whole picture. And so I encourage you to leverage these you know, highly, these newly highlighted people to think, learn how to think of what they do. Also, bonus points if you recognize that phone. Now, I have a dream. I have a dream that we have a CNCF stack. Now, I don't know if this is actually what is needed, but I'm throwing this out there because it, might, it highlights two big gaps, two that I mentioned before. One is that we need better integrations across projects, right? I'm, I work very tightly in the observability space right now, and I am amazed to see how much cross-project collaboration was, is within observability, right? You saw yesterday during the project updates with Prometheus that has integration with open metrics, open telemetry. I mean, these are projects that are working together. I want to see bigger. I'll get to that. And the next part is gaps in our offering. We need to identify these gaps and assess, are we targeting these personas correctly? Should we even be targeting those personas? And so kind of to like highlight again uh, the gaps that I found earlier, granted this is a tiny sample set, bare metals, um, some L4, L4, L7 requests, I am. I am is really interesting. I am because I am has been built before cloud was a real keyword, right? Before I heard, saw there's a KubeCon uh, bingo, right? Before cloud was one of those word, like, words you'd find there. There are technologies and concepts that are built before cloud is a thing, and we are probably leaving those adopters and users behind. And so we need to start thinking about how we can bring them in. Now, this is where, as a community, we need to hear how we're leaving you behind and how we've burned you, right? We don't want that to happen, and we need that honest feedback. So, you know, pinky in the brain, taking over the world. Now, we have a huge opportunity to keep this momentum going, and I trust it will take over the world. I mean, I trust that we will meet here together in several years and continue to celebrate innovation, community, and passion. Now, talking about steps towards the future, I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but these are just ideas. And at the very least, they would ask, get us, ask good questions and give us some data to make more informed decisions. One wild idea, a cross-tag project group that is focused purely on integration across now we're doing observability, all these things there. Another one is in the questions that we ask our consumers, our end users, adopters, when did our technology fail you? What were the things that you had to internally manipulate in a really weird way so things could fit properly with our things? Would you keep on using it? Asking people a year maybe after they dropped our technologies why they stopped using it and are they happier with their new offerings? Another thing is questioning who are we targeting? Are our personas correct? Are we thinking too big or too small? And also, you know, documentation is a big thing. Maybe let's have like a GitHub project or issues list that is all the projects, you know, problems you wish you would have seen. So where do you fit into this? Well, one thing that I love about KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, is that this is a place where I can meet people who are working on a wide variety of problems. I often learn I'm not alone in trying to solve for something. 
So my ask of you is when you find that problem that keeps on coming up, strongly consider creating an open source project. I don't think you'd be alone in wanting to solve it, and it could one day be you speaking in front of thousands, talking about how you solved a real problem. Thank you, everyone. It's been an honor to be your co-chair.